Then we have the 2021 Grammys. I mean, no comment. No fucking comment. We get ethereal cottagecore realness in Folklore and Evermore, and she decides to turn around and give us a look that seems as though she went to a kid's birthday party wearing a new dress, and then she took all the kids to a forest and said, grab whatever you can see, rub it in crazy glue, and stick it on my plain dress, and then went to the Grammys. Hi Swifties, welcome back to my channel. I am the Taylor Swiftologist, and today we are going to be talking about Taylor Swift's red carpet style, or shall I say, the evolution and occasional disasters, but also the very high highs of her red carpet style. So if you don't know me, I'm Zach, I am the Taylor Swiftologist, and I am a journalist by trade and a Swifty by choice. And on this channel, I like to apply my organizational and analytical skills to discussing the public life of my favorite pop persona, Taylor Swift. I will soon be expanding that to include other content, for example, a vlog from my trip to Phuket in Thailand, which is coming out very soon and also commenting on other celebrities and different cultural relevant happenings. So if any of that sounds good to you, make sure to subscribe, like this video and leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. Tell me what your favorite red carpet looks are. And if you disagree with me, remember to keep it respectful or I will block you, okay? So now we can truly get into it. It's been a minute. I went on vacation. I'm all rested and relaxed. We hit 4,000 subscribers. I'm super psyched about that. Getting very close to my goal of 5K before the end of the summer, which I think is very, you know, within our reach. And today I would like to discuss, as I said, the high highs and the low lows of Taylor Swift's red carpet style. So if you haven't seen my street style videos, I have already made two of those. So one of them was on her tour fashions and the other one was on her like candid, walking out of our house, outfits that she put together kind of vibe. So these outfits and looks that I'm gonna be discussing are what she presents to the public as her image during whatever given era an album she's promoting. So I'm gonna go all the way from debut 2007, 2006, 2007, until the present day, uh, post folklore and into the Taylor's version recordings. And we're gonna examine how her style has evolved and changed over time. If it has, we can also discuss maybe which era was her best, which one was most reflective of who she is as an artist. Taylor's sartorial identity or the story that she tells through her clothing choices has always been a little bit confused. When it hits, she's serving. And when it misses, it's like she got dressed in the dark. In general, and I said this in my street style video, I think that she tends to look better in classic and clean looks. So I'm thinking clean lines, simple silhouettes, classic tailoring and solid colors. I think that prints are okay, but they can occasionally make her look a little bit silly. And I was looking into like reasons why I feel that Taylor looks best in a very specific kind of look with a specific kind of styling. And I came across the Kibe body type, which I think I'm pronouncing wrong, but the Kibe body type is a body type system developed by a man called David Kibe in the 1980s that focused on five main categories that he thinks all women fall into when they're dressing themselves. Dramatic, classic, natural, gamine, and romantic. So if you'd like to look into those a little bit more, maybe see if it can help you inform your personal style, I would suggest doing so. It seems like a pretty helpful resource. And it basically evaluates the balance of your yin and your yang elements in your physical features to inform how you select clothes to put on your body. So Kiva talks about the balance of two specific energies, the yin and the yang. The yang in a person is sharp and angular, and the yin in a person is soft and rounded. So Taylor's body type, according to this system, is dramatic. So dramatics are often long and lean. They're quite muscular. They're angular with sharp edges. They have square shoulders and a sleek facial bone structure. All sounds like Taylor Swift. They have sharp and prominent angles, almond-shaped eyes, narrow lips, and general upswept look to the face. There also can be some asymmetry in dramatic types. So perhaps their lankiness is a little bit uneven. We can definitely see that with Taylor. She has very long arms. And so the dramatic type is on the far side of the yang scale with that more like masculine or angular sharp energy which means that Taylor looks better in these more like masculine sharp and angular tailoring. Yin elements that soft and roundness should be incorporated sparingly onto her body because the clean and sleek lines really work for her and emphasize her natural features. So print wise anything bold and geometric looks good on Taylor according to her dramatic body type and things that she should avoid are watercolor prints, floral prints, soft swirls, anything overly cute animated styles small symmetrical prints, you know, anything that seems a little bit too fussy or ornate and can distract from the very kind of severe beauty that she has with these dramatic upswept and sharp angular features. The jury's out on what exactly looks good or doesn't look good on any given body type, but these are a couple of things that I found that do and don't look good on a dramatic body type that I think apply to Taylor in this scenario. Things that look good on Taylor, fabrics that hold a good shape, moderate to heavy with a matte finish, textures that are tightly woven, and if shiny fabrics are incorporated, they should be stiff or very glitzy. 
glitzy, heavy satins and Italian tweeds, for example, look very good on Taylor. Lightweight fabrics can work if they are tailored well. She should avoid overly sheer clothing items, lightweight floating fabrics, very clingy fabrics, rough textures that are thick and heavy that overpower the body. Details of her outfits should be clean, sharp, and simple to complement the sculpted chiseledness of her features. Shoulder pads are always a good idea because they emphasize that natural dramatic angularism. Clean angular necklines like plunging bees, skinny turtleneck, high mandarin collars, men's tailoring in general, and halters. So yeah, basically for Taylor, I think anything that is tailored, haha, no pun intended, looks good. So crisp cuffs, sharp pleats, and sharp lapels. She should avoid small and fussy detail. Overly ornate or intricate detail makes her look a little bit silly. So we're talking ruffles, lacy frills, feathers, bows, tucks, and gathers, and also overly unconstructed detail. So sloppy necklines, shapelessness, and oversized sleeves. Anything very oversized or too clingy or very extravagant, so like very, very finely detailed, will look silly on her because her features are very dramatic and are better served by simplicity. So when I was reading about this, I felt like it very much resonated with the qualms and the issues that I have with the various looks that Taylor has presented us with on the red carpet. And it also explains why she either like completely knocks it out of the park or it looks terrible. It's very hard to find an in-between with her on these red carpet looks. My overall sentiments on Taylor's red carpet looks is that occasionally she is brave, you know? She takes risks and I admire that about her, but she is all over the place. Many celebrities will like pick one designer and work with them exclusively to kind of develop a rapport and build up an image or a style. We can see that with Kim Kardashian and Balenciaga or formerly with Kanye West as her stylist. Emma Chamberlain with Louis Vuitton is a really good example of elevating someone's natural beauty features and making it high fashion. And designers that have generally dressed Taylor well, I would say are Ellie Saab, who's been responsible for some of her best looks. Ellie Saab understands how to dress Taylor as this lanky, willowy glamazon while giving her some of those yin feminine elements without overpowering her and making her look silly or fussy. Ellie Saab's designs also appeal to Taylor's very whimsical, princessy inclinations. Oscar de la Renta, surprisingly as well, is a name that comes up frequently when you're going through Taylor's fashion history, and more often than not, it's pretty good. It's not as uniquely distinctive as Ellie Saab. Oscar de la Renta really helped her out during a terrible time for her style. The lover era, which we will get into very shortly. So now let's go through the sands of time and I can show you what I mean. We'll start at the very beginning, which is a very good place to start in the debut era. So I guess we can talk a little bit about like in each era, what she was trying to communicate, what her mission was and whether she achieved it or not. So with the debut, we have to kind of give her a pass. She was a newborn child. She was being birthed into this world. The budget was low. She was recycling music video outfits on the red carpet. I'm not gonna go through too many in particular outfits from this period because, you know, I don't think it's fair, but there were a few moments that I really liked. For example, the black evening gown with the satin gloves, very chic. I loved that she wore the dress from the Teardrops on My Guitar music video on the red carpet at the CMTs. I mean, it it was a dress so beautiful that it deserved to be worn twice. I'm only sad that she didn't bring her sparkly guitar along with it. And also the various sundresses that she wore on the red carpet, which was certainly a casual approach to formal wear. So what message was she trying to convey during this time? She was trying to say that, you know, she's your everyday girl next door. She's relatable. She's just like you. You can call her up and have a gossip. You might even have, you know, things that she said written down in your diary to remember later because it felt like she spoke directly to your soul. It's quirky, it's relatable, and it worked. However, the misses in this era were pretty foul, <laughs> let's just say. So the first mistake that I would like to point out to you is her Grammy dress in 2008. So this was her first Grammys. We have to cut her a little bit of slack. She's wearing a floor length corseted purple-ish gown and it's giving not tailored right at the bottom. <laughs> it's giving, I don't know what I'm doing here. I accidentally stumbled onto this red carpet. And more egregiously, I would like to point out this dress from the CMAs in 2007. This is disgusting. It's giving Miss Havisham. It is a very musty, mildewy cream gown, and it does not flatter her at all. She is really not good at picking colors that suit her complexion, which is something that I will return to as we discuss her looks further in this video. And also, this is not the last time that she wore this disgusting, heinous, off cream color. She insisted on wearing it one more time after that. So this is a Sir from the debut era. It is a Badgley Mishka gown worn to her first Met Gala, and I feel like this Met Gala flies under the radar. I don't hear a lot of people talking about this look, but I actually don't hate this. It's okay, especially for the debut era when, you know, the lows were so, so low and Miss Havisham-esque. But 
I don't know if the specific gold is good on her, but I think that it's good. I love her in a sparkly moment and she got a really nice blowout. So, you know, but moving on into Fearless. The message here was a bit more glamorous. She had already established her precedent as that quirky, relatable content teen, and she became the HBIC of brokenhearted teenagers. So now it was a little bit more aspirational, a little bit more elevated, still relatable, but slightly more glamorous. In general, this was actually not her worst red carpet style era, which is very surprising. And it was kicked off fabulously with a very sleek, not shiny or glittery black floor length gown with a plunging v-neck. The collarbones shining through and the updo are really, you know, serving a lot and highlighting the best features of her natural beauty. But I guess we can look at a flop from the Fearless era. So here's an example of her just dressing completely wrong for her body type. So in 2009, she went to the ACMs and she wore this red draped and rouged number and she is completely lost in it. It hides like all the nice long and clean lines of her body and she, it looks very pale she looks very washed out. The hair is very presidential and like not in a good way. It's giving Hillary Clinton. It's not giving I'm a young, famous, successful pop star. But you know, we also had our wins in 2009 at the VMAs. This is one of my favorite Taylor looks because it's draped, but in a fitted way. So there's a lot of loose material, but it's very strategically placed on her body and it's slightly backless. So it gives a chance for her shape to really shine through. Though it seems kind of over the top, the embellishment on this is actually quite simple and sparse. She looks like a gorgeous princess and she literally arrived in a carriage. So I think, you know, the intended effect was really achieved here. At the CMAs later that year, however, she didn't look so good. I think that the shape of this dress does her no favors. It's not tailored enough. And I'm gonna keep saying that over and over again because I feel like it's something that she, her stylist, her team has not really like, imprinted into their minds that good tailoring is very important when you have a very long, lean, angular body. Um, it's very easy for her to get lost and overwhelmed by fabric, and that's kind of what's happening here. Um, but I do like the dripping gold effect. It gives the air of what she's trying to achieve, but the execution of it really just falls short. Um, but you know, we do reach the pinnacle of the Fearless era at the Grammys in 2010. It was a historic night for her. And I don't really care what anyone says because I've heard mixed opinions and reviews on this, but this is one of my favorite Taylor Swift looks of all time. It's grown up and sophisticated and the sea-like reflective blue water-ish movement of the gown really looks so gorgeous on her. And the sharpness and the shoulder detail is really stunning on her. I think it's very flattering, very nice. And when she walked in it, it moved really beautifully. This is another problem I think sometimes that uh, many celebrities have on the red carpet. It might might photograph poorly, but look really nice in transit between like getting an award and going to your seat or whatever. This dress did both. It photographed well and it looked lovely when she was walking around and accepting her speeches. I don't love the accessories here and I think she's over accessorized a lot of the times. I think most of the time she looks good with like a clear neck, no adornments there whatsoever, unless it's extremely simple and fine and with just like a diamond stud maybe or like small gold hoops and keep it moving everywhere else. But you know, I'm never listened to ever. But towards the tail end of the Fearless era, we go to the Met Gala again. And you know, these Met Gala looks are not talked about very much. I think the first one that people really like remember and think about is the 2012 look. But this 2010 look is actually probably one of my favorite Met Gala looks from her. She's wearing a Ralph Lauren ivory dress. And I think that this is actually like strangely a very flattering color on her. White is a little bit difficult for her to wear unless she has a spray tan. And the standard fluorescent blank white, I feel like isn't always the the best thing for her. But this is kind of like an off-white, I guess. I, I don't really know what I would call this, but I think it's very flattering on her. And it's got that kind of debut simplicity vibe, but the hair and makeup is very glamorous, which I feel like matures it just a little bit in a way that is very appropriate for the Met Gala. And keep in mind, this was before the Met Gala became like this whole social media event with like costume changes and stuff. It used to just be a very formal, fancy, you know, dinner party that was held that people wanted to look pretty for. And I think that this dress in general is a really good example of how in incorporating some yin elements, like that softness and the flowiness of the dress, um, paired with the color and the very close tailoring, uh, how this can look really nice on her when it's done properly. Let's go to the other side and talk about things that were not done properly. In June of 2010 at the CMT Awards, she wears this red John Galliano dress and she's rocking her straight hair, I think in public for the first time. And I mean, this is all just a little bit too severe. And this is the risk of the dramatic body type, I think, is that when you dress her wrong and you incorporate either, if you incorporate either too much yang or too much yin, you end up looking a little bit scary. And Taylor does have that 
that inclination to look a bit villainous at times, just because of that angularness in her body and her upswept features and her height as well. I don't hate the dress in theory, but it is a little bit shapeless around the waist. I like the buckle detail as the strap, but the shoes really killed it for me. And this is not a good color on her. It's rusty, but you know, this night was very important because this is where the story of us was born. She was seated just a mere few seats away from John Mayer and she had never heard silence quite this loud. So now we get into Speak Now. So what was she trying to communicate to us during the Speak Now era? Well, it was a very fairy tale, whimsical girl moment, but it was a little bit more grown up. Again, like Fearless leveling up a little bit. It went from glamorous to elegant, I would say, a little bit more refined, a little bit more mature rather than just more expensive looking. And this was a nice kind of transitory period. It blends into Fearless seamlessly, but it has a few tweaks and elevations, and it's definitely a stepping stone between a girlish tailor and a womanish tailor. She's also becoming a touch more modern here. She's experimenting with the different vibes that go beyond just pretty girl dressed nice on a red carpet. The first look I'd like to point to from the Speak Now era is her Vanity Fair Oscar party look. This is a Zuhir Murad dress, and it is very gorgeous. It's gold, it's embellished, it's a mini dress. All of her lovely limbs are on display. She's definitely showing more skin. It's more form fitting than maybe some of her dresses that she had worn in the past. Importantly, this looks good because it's form fitting, but it's not clingy. It doesn't suck her in and she's not spilling out of it. The faux bob is really nice here as well. And in general, I think an updo when she's doing evening wear always looks nice. Then we zoom over to the 2011 Met Gala and this gown is something else. I mean, the hair and the makeup makes her look very old. First of all, it ages her beyond. And you know, a heavy eye on her is such a fine line between trampy and moody. <laughs> and more often than not, I would say it goes into trampy or even scary rather than moody and mysterious, which I think is what a smoky eye is supposed to be going for. And this dress is so ugly, I hate it. It looks like the shift of a dress that they put on someone when they're designing it and taking measurements rather than an actual finished dress. Like this looks like it just came out of a studio and there's just like way too much going on. It's very drapey, it's very floaty, it's not fitted enough and that cream color is just horrible. Also, there are too many fabrics. This is just like a lot going on. Taylor is very naturally beautiful and I just don't think that she needs to do all that much to look elegant and glamorous. However, that has never stopped her before. So these are some looks that I actually really liked from the Speak Now era. So first we have the Billboard Music Awards. She's wearing Ellie Saab and I like this. It's very grown up. The blowout was good. The hair is very relaxed. I feel like there's a lot of yin going on in this outfit. I do wonder if, if this was tailored just a touch a little bit more, perhaps around the waist, would it look better? Like would the flow of it feel a bit more in keeping with her body? But you know, it's not overly remarkable. It's just like a nice thing that she wore. And something I really liked was what she wore to the Teen Choice Award. This was definitely inspired by Marilyn Monroe and I like this. I like a high pony. I like the bangs kind of left down. This neckline looks very good on her. The cinched waist, always good. And the ruffled skirt is structured. Note, it's very tailored. It looks well. It fits her nice. The styling, again, you know, her makeup, her jewelry, and her shoes don't look good to me, but it has been worse. Um, and you can see that she's slowly trying to broaden the public's conception of her by trying on slightly more provocative outfits. You know, when you see a dress like this, you do kind of make a connection between Marilyn Monroe and whoever is wearing that kind of dress. And I feel like she was really shifting the needle very, very gently and subtly at this point. And this was a good way to go about doing that. Here is a complete flop from the Speak Now era. I think this was like more towards the end of it and heading into red territory. Uh, this was at the Rodarte fashion show, but this is just heinous. This color is so horrendous on her. And it reminds me of that dress from the debut period. I just don't know how someone could like have seen her in that and gone, yes, this is very flattering. It looks good on you. She continuously wears this color. It's not just like a one-off event. She has worn this color multiple times and it looks like spoiled milk. I need her to stop. And the dress is just not flattering. It's not tailored very nicely. She's way too buttoned up and covered. She looks matronly. It ages her unnecessarily. Something else I didn't really like, this was the 2011 CMA Awards. I also hate this color. It washes her out. It looks bad. I don't like the rouging. The hair is kind of like a mess. I mean, it's just not good. So there aren't a lot of standout looks from the Speak Now era, but then the Lorax starts to do promo. And this happens right after she cuts her hair. And this was kind of a dramatic change. You know, she's straightening her hair. She's getting rid of those bouffant, dreamy, girlish curls. She's becoming more modern. She's becoming, you know, like an everyday woman, not just like a relatable girl. She's, you know, your uh, relatable older sister or your relatable camp counselor vibe. Yeah, so this is the first public outing, I think formally on like a carpet that she did with the hair. And I love the dress. 
dress. I love this color of her. I love the cut of the dress. And also it's a real Easter egg. You know, she was wearing red, working on an album called Red. This is what the Easter eggs used to be. This was many, many months before we had any sort of announcement that an album was even coming. I also think that if Taylor's gonna do a high neckline, it should be done like this, like a scooped high-ish neckline rather than right up at the top of her neck. It kind of reveals a little bit of her chest still and allows it to feel a little bit less restrictive. Another kind of jarring transition into being a grown-up woman was the 2012 ACMs. I love this white gold combo. Technically this dress is kind of cheap looking, but she pulls it off. The geometric cutouts are a really clever way to play with like shape and texture while not making her look silly. It's very deliberate and very sharp in the tailoring and it makes her look lanky and willowy, really accentuating her long lines. The blowout and softness of her hair really kind of, you know, tones down that angularity that is happening in many different areas of this photo. And I think if it didn't have the little cutouts on her side back, I don't think it would look as good. This is all in the lead up to her real I am woman, hear me roar moment. This is another look that I actually really liked. It is the Billboard Music Awards of 2012. Um, I mean, what a difference a year makes. This is so much bolder and like her journey towards womanhood is really clear at this juncture in hindsight. Um, she's ready, y'all. This is Ellie Saab, of course. It is a floor length gown. It's billowy, but in a very straight up and down way with a lot of geometric lines at the top. And I think that's why it doesn't look fussy and it also doesn't look like it's swamping her in material. I really like this look a lot. Now we're going into my favorite era, red. Um, but you know, interestingly, this was not my favorite red carpet era because her street style was definitely what took my breath away during this period of time. Um, but she was definitely leaning away from girlhood and more towards womanhood during this time, as I mentioned. Um, so keep in mind, this is 2012. The fourth wave of feminism was really kicking off. That Buzzfeed feminism thing was taking off. Fuck the patriarchy, keychains afoot, etc. And there was a renewed trend of like wearing men's wear as women's wear. So we saw a lot of like structured tailoring, high-waisted shorts and jeans, and just overall more like suits and separates. And this was great for Taylor because of her dramatic body type and her yang energy. And in this era, she wanted to communicate that she was to be taken seriously as a woman and an artist. She was grown up and she was flirting with a more mature side of life and we were all just gonna have to love it and deal with it. And you know, she tried to do that with her red carpet style. And to be fair, sometimes it worked. It was just sometimes it didn't. The first kind of public outing that we get after Red has been announced, we are never ever getting back together, is out there. Everybody's heard it. We're having a very dramatic sonic shift in her career as a songwriter, uh, is the VMAs. So this is the VMAs in 2012. And you know, I love this. I think this is her first formal appearance in like a suit and separates look on the red carpet. There might have been one more actually now that I think about it where she wore black, but this was the first one with the new haircut with the bangs and the straight hair. I love the separates in white and I think she always looks good in men's tailored pieces, jackets and pants. I do wish that the pants didn't fade into such a close taper, but I digress. That's just me nitpicking. I love the plunging neckline of the suit and I think that it's sophisticated and sexy while not being too overly showy. Then we have her at the Ellie Fashion Show a couple of months later. I guess she wasn't really to let go of that conservative energy. Vintage stuff actually does look good on her. I just don't understand why she insists on choosing all the vintage designs with such high necklines because it doesn't flatter her. Um, but I do like this powdery blue on her, however. The next two looks are really just, you know, they tried to do something and they didn't do it very well. So this is the 2012 AMAs and her stylist was like mad at her that day. Her stylist woke up and spat in her Diet Coke and really sabotaged her from the moment she walked out the door. Proportionally, this is a weird dress. Like I said, she has some asymmetry going on where her arms are like quite long for her body and doing a full length sleeve with a short skirt is really not a good vibe on her. I like some of this detailing, but the shoes make the proportions look even weirder and then the bangs cut off her face and the eye makeup is far too heavy. Similarly, her stylist hated her at the 2013 People's Choice Awards. I hate this, I hate it so much. It looks cheap. This does not look like an expensive outfit or an expensive outing. This is a good example of how too much yang can make her look so sharp that she looks old and scary. Um, the shoulders are slightly padded and the V-neck line is like way too plunging. The makeup is horrible. Uh, those earrings are a mess. It's just terrible vibes all the way around. So she attends the Golden Globes and I have to say, she rarely looks good at this event in particular. It's very rare to see Taylor offer us a sleigh at the Golden Globes and you know, this is no exception to that. I don't know why this doesn't look that good. It's not terrible, it's just kind of bleh. I think this color is just a bit drab for an event like this. She loves sparkles. She loves to wear like reflective shimmery fabric. So I don't know why she doesn't wear that to an event like this or she really is gonna be photographed so much. The dress itself fits her 
beautifully. I love the actual dress, you know, barring the color. It has the right amount of draped material in exactly the right places. It has sharp angles, but also a billowy element. I guess it's just underwhelming because of the color. Then we have a serve, the 2013 Grammys. I love this look. I'm on the fence with the shoes, but in general, I think the billowiness of this Jay Mandel pleated gown uh, with the glittery harness is a nod to both her past and her future. You know, the billowing gown is very like girlish and her past and the, the more sharp and severe glittery harness is indicative of the fact that she's growing up and she's trying new things and she's experimenting. The eye makeup is a little bit too heavy, especially because it's guarded by this very severe bang, but I love this look. And I think it tells us something both about where she's been, but also where she's going. And this is the sartorial story that I want her to be telling us at all times. You know, she puts so much thought into many different parts of her career. It just seems like, it doesn't seem like she puts a lot of thought into what she puts on her body and how she communicates that visually to the world. Up next is the 2013 Met Gala, where she's really giving us Blake Lively here. The theme was punk, and I think she adhered to the theme pretty well while not alienating and eclipsing her own personal style. I like the gothic elements that are here, ornate collar that extends to the shoulder, the lacy cutout, and I love her in black. The heavy eye makeup actually really works here, and the Met is very pompous and camp, so I like that she leaned into that sense of drama a little bit. Another event from 2013 was the Billboard Music Awards, and something about this look is giving drag queen. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Again, the proportions are weird here. I hate the long sleeve short dress. It looks strange. The sleeves are like cracked pool tiles, and I think that this blue is just a little bit too rich on her especially because it's covered in sequins as well. There's a lot going on. And we don't get a pony very often, so I like the hair, but overall, this is like a weird vibe. I did not like this, it was very severe. Rounding out the end of 2013, we have the CMAs. And you know, this was one of my favorite looks. I look back on this very fondly. It had to be a little bit over the top because you know, it was a big moment for her. It was like her graduation from country music. She was unofficially leaving it behind and moving to poppier waters. Not that everybody knew it at the time, but by this time, I think 1989 was fairly put together. So she knew that, you know, she was receiving the Pinnacle Award and she would be moving on very shortly. It was her home cocoon sending her off into the pop world. Bless her little heart. Um, and this look should be bad theoretically when I've talked about how like, billowing fabrics and like not good tailoring doesn't really look great on her. But because of the night and the occasion, I found this very endearing. It was her graduation. You know, I felt like it was a lot of like her elders giving her their blessing to move on and congratulating her for learning the trade and the craft so well. Elisa really gets her when it comes to that yin side, knowing when to incorporate those girlish elements. I love the detailing on this dress, the color, the low bun and the satin sheen to the material. It's very sweet. So this is an A plus for me. Another dress that I really like, but when I look at pictures of it, it doesn't look as good as I remember was the 2013 AMAs and this shouldn't work, but it does. And I think something to note and is important to talk about when we discuss Taylor Swift's style is that she was very, very thin here. And I do wonder if that sometimes does color how we look at her fashion and how we decide whether she looks good or bad. I think it certainly does for me somehow because when you're skinnier, clothes hang off of you and you know, high fashion designers are designing with this body type in mind. And I think that that allows, you know, people who conform to that beauty standard to get away with wearing something kind of ugly or strange and still um, be allowed to look good or to be seen as looking good. And this is maybe an example of that. Um, it looks better in videos than it does in pictures, but I love her in a shimmery gold. I like the Jimmy Choo's that she's wearing and the blowout is very good. It's feathery, it's, it's iconic, it's a serve. So the next era is kind of like not really an era. It's like a mini era in and of itself. There's another one of these coming at you later. This is between Red and 1989. And she was laying the groundwork for a pretty major sartorial shift and overview. Um, and she had to put in the groundwork and do it a little bit subtly. It's very different to her earlier red looks, but it's not quite the same as her 1989 looks, which is why I think it's its own distinct mini era. And this was like just pre and just post bob, like when she cut off her hair and went to do short hair, uh, which was a very big deal at the time. So we start with the 2014 Golden Globes. She's wearing this Carolina Herrera color blocked dress. This was very close to being a serve, but it didn't quite get there for me. And I think that's always her issue with gowns like this is that they're not quite tailored to fit her well. It's shapeless almost entirely at the bottom and the back of the dress is just too much fabric going on. Again, she was very small and skinny at this time and it was very easy for her to get lost in fabric. Um, but I like the bodice era and I like the transition from the black into that hot pink and her makeup is kind of villainous here too. So there's something about it that I like, but it doesn't quite reach what I need it to give me uh, for the Golden Globes because she can never get it right. 
The 2014 Grammys, again, this was a surge, really on a streak for a couple of years with the Grammys. Uh, unfortunately, it's broken in 2015. But in 2014, this was a legendary night. You know, this was the night things changed. She did not win Album of the Year for Red, and she, you know, fully committed to the bit. She was like, I'm gonna cut off my hair, and I am gonna become a pop star, and nobody's gonna stop me. So she is wearing this kind of like chain link extravaganza. It's a Gucci dress, and it works because it is tailored so beautifully. It has a subtle cinch in the waist, and it flows straight down to the floor. It doesn't like get caught anywhere, but it also doesn't leave her too much room to get lost or start drowning. There's a mesh see-through moment on the chest, which makes the high neckline a little bit softer. And she called it her suit of armor. Apparently it was a very heavy dress for her to wear, um, but we respect her for suffering for fashion. And finishing out this mini era, we have the 2014 ACM Awards. Wow. Wow, what a moment. A moment that was most pleasing to me in my career. This is very, very iconic. I think this is probably one of her best looks. Certainly it's one of her most popular and often replicated. This is the first red carpet appearance of the crop top, a very defining fundamental visual element to the 1989 era, a sign of her girl boss independence. She was teasing and she was serving here. The slit with the leg and the slits and the collarbones are suggestive in a very classy way. I love the salty wave in her hair. She's wearing a frosted lip and she She's really just serving cunt, you know? I can't say that there was a moment before this where she was serving cunt, but like here, here is the first time. You know, I really see it, I really feel it. Um, she's being a bitch and I love it. Then we have the 2014 Met Gala and this is a quintessential Taylor Swift look to me. It's not my favorite, but I understand why people love it and why it's referenced so much. It plays into her good girl ethereal princess thing, so much so that she uses this as the um, buried old Taylor in the Look What You Made Me Do music video. Um, it has an element of sophistication and high fashion to it as well. This blush color is really beautiful. Oscar de la Renta designed this. It's quite regal and I love the added drama of the long train and the huge bow in the back. It looks great. It's very, very good. And the theme for this Met Gala was beyond fashion. I don't really know if that fits the theme, but the theme seems pretty vague. So whatever. So now we're into the 1989 era. The girl boss has landed. She's ready to live her single gal free life. And she's not worried about impressing men or taking any of them home from the award shows that she goes to attend the red carpets on. This was her emancipatory album. She was making music on her own terms. She was not letting her reputation be defined by men or drama anymore. I mean, that was her intention. It didn't work out that way, but that's what she wanted to happen. But the clothing here was certainly like more seductive. It was more experimental and it was more risky than she had been in the past. And what I liked about this period was how versatile it was and how reflective it was of her embarking on a new chapter in her career, even though there were some particularly, you know, bad crimes of fashion here. Starting with the 2014 VMAs, the Versace jumpsuit. I mean, this is a totally ridiculous outfit. Like it was, it was up her ass the entire time. It was so unbelievably short. I don't know how she wasn't picking a wedgie the whole evening. It slayed in pictures, but it looked so weird on camera. Um, she wanted us to know that her legs were long and ready to strut and strut she did. This was the Victoria's Secret vacation of Taylor Swift. She went to that fashion show and she was like, I'll have one of those. I, in fact, I'll become one of those. And for some reason, I like this. She really committed to it uh, and she was serving. She looks ridiculous when you see videos of her moving in it, but it served in the still image. It really served. Then we have the 2015 Grammys. I hate this. I hate this so much. Um, the gradient is fine, I suppose, but this dress is both too structured and not structured enough. The styling ruins it completely. I like the idea of a pink shoe, but this is just too clunky and too severe. The earrings are all wrong. Her hair looks really thin and combed over and the eye makeup is very harsh and makes her look very old. And I don't like this, this is too imposing. She's already tall and angular and sharp and quite intimidating at, just by her natural beauty features. So adding all of these like crazy structural elements, like way too much yang in this, in this element. We needed some softness, we needed some roundness, we needed a romantic girlish element to this. It was just a little bit too much. So now we have the real crime of the 1989 era, the 2015 L Style Awards, God, I hate this so much. <laughs> it's giving Disney villain. It's giving Yzma from The Emperor's New Groove. Her hair is yanked off her face and pulled behind her and brushed into these thin little twigs that just sit lifelessly and sadly at her shoulders. The cat eye is horrible. The dress itself, I hate. I like green on her, but this green is costumey, like villain costumey, and the lace detailing on it is horrendous. The straps are horrible. They look like they are not there for any sort of practical purpose or any sort of ornate purpose. They just look stupid and the shoes are terrible. So I give this look a zero out of 10. 
Fortunately, a couple days later, she turned it around with this Cavalli gown that she wore at the 2015 Brit Awards. Um, I loved this. I think this was a risk that paid off. The hair is a bit helmet hair, but I can forgive it for the luxuriousness of the gown that she wore. It's more simple. I like the fact that it's plain black with a red print on top of it. The dress fits her very nicely. Uh, it's imposing, but it's not severe or scary. So I liked it. Let's look at some more experiments that didn't exactly pan out the way that she thought they would. 2015, the Billboard Music Awards. This is a Balmain white jumpsuit. I just don't like the cut or the fit of this. It's too loose around the knees and the hips, and then it's too tight around the bust. The cutouts are very ill-fitting, and she seems to be falling out of it, and it's not like Taylor is like the most endowed person in that region anyway, so for her to be spilling out of something, it means that it's really tailored not properly to her body. I get what she was going for here, but I just don't like it. I do like her in a jumpsuit, but this was just not it for me. And then we have another tragedy, which is the 2015 VMAs. This is a perfect example of how she shouldn't dress. There is so much going on here. The awkward, ill-fitting joggers on the red carpet, the angular shoes with the crisscrossing straps, the insanely ugly color palette, this dull, dreary houndstooth, I mean, and it's all paired with this most severe slicked back hair and an insane Julia Fox eyeshadow eyeliner moment. It is giving cult leader, and you know what? She kind of was a cult leader at that time. Girl boss, hashtag squad. Luckily, she recovers towards the tail end of the 1989 era, 2016 Grammys. Finally, she has figured out a color block that works. The shoes are simple and they don't intrude on the drama of the dress. The crop top is true to the era and the colors are bright and fun and daring. It's a brave, strange pairing, but it works, especially because she has a spray tan. They correctly decided that she would look washed out if she wore colors like that without being spray tanned. So props to whoever made that decision. Um, the only thing I would change is to make the necklace, which looks like some sort of like diamond collar, into a very simple, delicate, flat gold chain. That's what I would like. Also the coconut head hair. I hate it so much. It's giving Anna Wintour, and this was the beginning of the end. So um, I think she should learn that she should never cut her hair in that style ever again. It is just the bearer of bad news. Shortly after the Grammys, we get the Vanity Fair Oscars party. Wow, what a moment. I love this look. It's so simple. It plays her her natural beauty really well, clean, long line. It's barely there, but it's clinging onto her due to some excellent draping. The choker collar high neck moment works because of the plunging neckline, which goes all the way down to her belly, and there's the right amount of skin on show. And the hair actually looks good here, I regret to inform everyone, uh, because in general, you know, I'm an anti-coconut head warrior. All right, so the second and final kind of mini era that I wanted to discuss was Bleachella. Um, of course, this was a very unique moment, probably her most experimental because the girl was lost. I mean, she was a mess, she was all over the place. Um, it was an identity crisis, she was grasping at straws, she was struggling to maintain relevance while courting a significant public backlash. I think also she just like didn't really give a shit here, so she tried everything, and personally, I loved this era aesthetically because we hardly ever get to see her let the mask drop and uh, give us a moment that's not entirely thought out very specifically months or weeks in advance. So this seemed very off the cuff, which is what I liked the most about it. And it all starts with the 2016 Met Gala. I mean, it's hard to divorce this from its context, but I'm gonna try, you know, Getaway Car, Joe Alwyn, Tom Hiddleston. This is objectively not a good look. The theme of the evening was fashion and technology. So I think you can see that she's going for this metallic technical fit and the shoes are actually quite cool. I like the top part of the dress, but it's the skirt that really kind of does it in for me. Um, it has this weird ruffled layer to it. I love that it's a snakeskin pattern. That is of course a wonderful Easter egg and the black lip with the blonde hair, that contrast, actually kind of serve. Here's another red carpet look that I loved from this era, the 2016 BMI Awards. I love this. I feel like this is something she definitely just kind of threw together at the last minute and it looks awesome. When the bleach blonde started to grow out, it weirdly kind of helped to soften her more dramatic features. This look should be very severe and villainous, but I think it's giving just the right amount of evil. I love the frosty pink lip and this is a very like 90s nostalgic look. It's simple, it fits nicely. The pattern is a little psychedelic. The colors are subtle, but interesting. I like it a lot. Okay, this next look is a little bit of a cheat because it's not technically a red carpet, but she was leaving a fashion show, but I'm letting this in because I wanna talk about it. I love the color of these boots and I like that she paired them with quite a simple nautical inspired ensemble. I love her in a nautical vibe and that's exactly what this is giving. It's Ralph Lauren, which is a designer she should definitely work with more often because it leans into her natural strengths of the dramatic body type a lot. The boots are showing just enough skin, but also they're contrasting with that burgundy lip she's wearing. I like this a lot. It's confused, but 
so was she. 2016 CMAs. This is the final red carpet look from Bleachella. I like that she was experimenting with a dark lip throughout this time. It looks best when it's a berry colored dark lip though, rather than like an orangey or a terracotta brownish color. This dress is like quintessentially classically tailored. It's got a geometric print and cutout. It's kind of red era reminiscent of that 2012 BBMA dress. She's got some skin showing and some sexiness with the black. When you look at it in hindsight, Bleachella actually is kind of a cohesive fashion visual era. All right, reputation. This is a hard era to discuss red carpet wise because Taylor was keeping such a low profile, obviously. Also her body changed quite a bit during this time. And I think it took her a while to adjust to that and to relearn what looks good on her, but also more importantly, to discover what she feels comfortable wearing. I always think that no matter what her size is, good tailoring looks great on her. Generally close fitting things look better, but I understand that when you're not feeling yourself, that maybe is not something that you wanna lean into, you know, a very highly tailored or like somewhat clinging garment. So oversized was really her thing at this time, especially when it came to her stage wear and her candid wear. The villainous vibe that she was going for really is more accurately depicted in Bleachella and even partly 1989. But you know, from here on out, she's a little bit safer, a little bit more boring, a little bit more predictable when it comes to her red carpet stuff, which is a shame. So the first look to discuss from the reputation era is this pale pink Versace gown that she wore at the Billboard Music Awards. I guess she was kind of leaning into the lover thing or preemptively trying to lean into the lightness and switch away from the darkness so that she could get out of this character that she was playing that wasn't as authentically true to who she was as a person, but that she had to perform in order to reorient her public image. I don't really like the detailing on this. It's all over the place and a bit dated, not in a good way. It's giving old person, not old Hollywood, which I feel like is what she was going for. It was fine, but you know, nothing remarkable, nothing special, didn't really tell me anything about where she was or what she was doing in her life. She was much more private here. I don't think she was trying to send us subliminal messages about what she was going through or what she was intending on doing in the future. The next look is also technically not a red carpet look, but it is a formal event. It is the favorite premiere and she's leaving through a back door because she doesn't want to eclipse Joe Alwyn Pisces. But I love this. It incorporates the flannel and moody color palette of the rep street style that she used to wear with those kind of like oversized hoodies. Um, but she dresses it up for a formal event, you know, that plaid casual moment. Um, I like the detailing and the varied length on the hem. I wish the neckline was a little bit more unique and that there was no weird like mesh covering, but you know, whatever, beggars can't be choosers. We were just lucky to get any content at all by this time. Here are some other kind of forgettable moments from the Reputation era at the 2018 AMAs. This was documented pretty closely during Miss Americana. The Mirrorball outfit, I want you to know that I don't like this so much. Um, I think the high neckline is what's doing it for me. There's not enough demarcation between her skin, the dress, and the boots. Um, the boots also have a hideous black toe box. I think she could have done separates here with like glittery thigh high boots that didn't straight up continue on with the same material from the dress. I don't like it. It's not flattering. I like the idea of it, but the execution of it just was giving party city instead of party girl out for a night on the town. Then we have the 2018 Golden Globes after party. This is boring to me. I like the bustiness of it all. I think that it's quite sexy, but it's dull. Yawn. And then we have the lover era, you know, which just gets dragged approximately every three working days on this YouTube channel. Um, She was happy and she was in love. And apparently she was shopping at Claire's. I get that this was a visual shift from lover into her happy thriving era, but I think she just forgot to keep it mature and high fashion at the same time. I just didn't vibe with her style in this era at all. It was juvenile and it wasn't appropriate. So something that I didn't actually mind from the lover era was the 2019 iHeartRadio Music Awards. Um, she was kicking it off here, the lover era. She hadn't officially announced it, but she was on the cusp. And I actually like this. It's giving rainbow fish. The proportions are right. The half sleeve is a good length. Uh, the legs are on display. The shoes are a little corny, but they're cute. Um, um, the hair is up. I liked it. It was okay. Then we have something that I absolutely hated and I feel feral every time I look at it. This is the 2019 Time Out Awards. Literally, what the fuck is this nonsense? She looks like a loofah. And these colors are so hideous on her. If you have a spray tan and your outfit is still washing you out, girl, change your clothes. The hair and the makeup is really nice, but the dress looks really cheap, like hotel curtains. And it also looks like it needs to be steamed. You are literally on a red carpet, girl. What are you doing? Can't stress how much I hate this particular shade of yellow. Not even just on her, it's an ugly color and she's just drowning in fabric here. It doesn't flatter her body type at all. Uh, speaking of loofah, the 2019 iHeartRadio Music Awards. Oh my God, <laughs> this is giving lush bath bomb. It's giving Johnson & Johnson baby products. I hate this so much. The shoes are fine, 
but the color, again, it just really washes her out. The high neck is really unflattering. It makes her look like she has a much weaker jawline than she actually does. I hate everything about this. It's horrible. She looks like a tea cozy. Then we have the 2019 AMAs. This is okay, but it's more of a reputation look. It's the black and green color palette again. I like the shade of green. Why didn't she wear this to the BBMAs in 2018 instead of that ugly, weird, pale pink thing? The ornateness in the shimmer is nice, but the boots are horrible. I really don't like them. This outfit is proportionally strange. It's asymmetrical. It makes her look short. I don't like it at all. And nor do I like her hair swept all the way over to one side. It's just not for me. And it's also not for Lover. What does this say about Lover? Nothing. Okay, now we're getting into the real, the real nonsense. The 2020 Golden Globes. What? God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. This is a tragedy. This is a national emergency. This is a war crime. I hate everything about this dress so, so much. The yellow is disgusting. It is snot-like. It is like your grandma's old couch. There is no shape to this. It flatters her in no way. She has her hair yanked back off her face like it's done something bad to her and she's punishing it for some reason. She has a random sliver of her stomach showing through in a little triangle. It's just horrible. This is really bad. It's wallpaper. It's so, it's just, I hate it. I hate it so much. Then we have the 2020 Sundance Film Festival. I should like this because I love her in suits and separates, but I just don't for some reason. Um, there's too much material going on here and like the print is too samey samey. I wish she had like cinched her waist a little bit with a belt or that she had put on a different coat, perhaps like a leather trench or even a soft drapey felt coat in a neutral color would have looked nice. Um, it's just all a little bit too much for me here. Uh, she actually ended the Lover era with a couple of serves though. Her surprise appearance at the NME Awards, uh, she served complete and total cunt. And she hadn't been doing that for a couple of years by this point. Hair on point, brushed and styled. Sometimes it's just brushed, sometimes it's just styled, sometimes we get neither. Today we got both. She's wearing these cool severe shoes that actually work to contrast a very um, expertly tailored, strategically slouchy take on menswear. Um, I loved this and it was very appropriate for the event too. NME is a little bit more punk, it's a little bit more rock and roll than say the Rolling Stone Awards or the Elle Magazine Style Awards. Moving swiftly on to another serve, the Cats premiere, Oscar de la Renta, she knew that she was going to be completely humiliated out of her mind by her performance in this. So she just had to pull focus by looking really gorgeous. And I love this, it's really nice. The print is pretty. Um, I think it could have been tailored a little bit more at the bottom, but compared to the rest of the Lover era, I'm happy. And finally, we end our journey through Taylor Swift's red carpet fashion with folklore and onwards. So, I mean, there aren't really any specific vibes going on here. She's just wearing what she likes, I guess. Um, and that's totally her right, but I think her era of serving cunt on the red carpet is well and truly over. Um, but there are some okay-ish moments as well as some disasters to look at from this period of time. The 2021 Brit Awards. I like this a lot. Um, I take issue with the fitting. It is ill-fitting. It doesn't fit her properly, but I see what she was going for and I like it. This is a two-piece Miu Miu number, uh, which is a brand that's known for being a little bit more girly and feminine, definitely more of that yin element. It would be interesting to see like what they could bring to soften her up if they were to dress her again and maybe custom make her something. I like the separates, as we know. The detailing is lovely. I like the silver, but there's something weird about the waist. It is just not flattering to her and it doesn't look comfortable. Like it looks like it doesn't fit her right. This is not her size. It's too tight and also shapeless at the same time. Then we have the 2021 Grammys. I mean, no comment. No fucking comment. We get ethereal cottagecore realness in Folklore and Evermore, and she decides to turn around and give us a look that seems as though she went to a kid's birthday party wearing a new dress, and then she took all the kids to a forest and said, grab whatever you can see, rub it in crazy glue, and stick it on my plain dress, and then went to the Grammys. Ugly, I hate a short dress with a long sleeve, the shoes don't match, the hair isn't done, the hair isn't even washed, I don't even think she put some dry shampoo in it, it is horrible. Not good. And then finally, the most recent look, we have the all too well red carpet velvet suit. I mean, it's fine. Her talk show looks for the red Taylor version era were way better actual serves. Um, but you know, this was okay. I like it. It's not terrible. It's not great. It's whatever. All right, Swifties, that's all I have for you today on the history of Taylor's red carpet fashion. I will be back again very soon with more videos. I'm trying to upload maybe twice a week, although don't hold me to that. But make sure to follow me on Instagram if you want to keep in touch with what I'm doing. I'm going to be putting up a vlog soon, so look forward to that. And check out my podcast, The Evolution of a Snake, if you haven't already. We go year by year through Taylor's career to observe her evolution and analyze all of the crazy decisions that she's made. So subscribe, like this video, leave a comment, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye, Swifties.